What's good Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji and today I want to talk to you guys about Cleveland Farrell and just kind of give you guys my thoughts and opinions on the first quarter of the season for the first round pick of the Oakland Raiders and I want to show you guys film as to why I believe the rest of this season as well as going into year two I believe he can be special so with that let's just get right into it. Now when it comes to rookies one of the first things I look for is awareness IQ because these are the types of things that if a rookie doesn't understand he has to be taught and oftentimes it gets hard for rookies to start learning not only the game speed but to learn what he needs to do on every single play some of the things he needs to feel some of the things he needs to watch out for and here's a great example of something he recognized real quick and shut down and i want to show you guys something within this play that i think is is missed if you watch number 72 the left tackle uh, if you watch the way he's going to approach Cleveland and try to just throw him, right? He tries shedding him and throwing him off of himself. You're going to see that Cleveland is going to recognize that and he feels it out. Now, that's awareness, right? To be able to understand what the tackles are going to do on screen plays, to understand other parts of his game as well that I'm going to show you guys a little bit later on, right? Things like down blocks, when you're going to get trapped. Things such as when an offense lineman is going to try counter punching you, right? When a running back is not going to block you and said he's going to let you go and you understand it's a screen. These are important concepts. And I want to show you guys a couple other plays that really stick out to me when I watch Cleveland. One of the first things that I mentioned in that first play was the fact that Cleveland Farrell is a very smart, high IQ rookie. He understands and he feels out certain types of plays. And again, that's a very important concept to understand. And here's another example of that. He's going to make a beautiful read on this play, and he's able to essentially almost intercept it. He doesn't actually pick it off, but as you're going to see on this play, he's going to get his hands up, knock the ball down, and this is a third down play. We get off the field because of this play, but the important part is the fact that Cleveland Farrell felt the left tackle try to push him forward, kind of the way the Denver Broncos left tackle tried doing, and as you see, Cleveland Farrell breaks this pass up. Now, we did lose this game. But that's besides the point, right? The whole point of this video is to show you guys that Cleveland Farrell understands the game. He understands his job responsibility. He understands his gap containment, his gap assignment. And honestly, I love the way the Oakland Raiders and Paul Gunther are using him. They're letting him be a full-time three-down defensive end. And that's kind of what you expect for a first-round rookie. But that's not always the case, right? Marcus Davenport was the 14th overall pick a couple of years ago and he did not play a whole lot to start the season i mean he plays much more today he played much more towards the end of the year but he wasn't a true three down lineman unlike cleveland farrell who the raiders have a lot of faith in and honestly i see why they have that faith in him you're gonna see this play again and you're gonna see that the left tackle is gonna try pushing him and cleveland farrell recognizes that cleveland farrell is not falling for the fact that this team is trying to run this green and, and that he's the guy that they essentially need to chase the quarterback, right? A lot of defensive ends here will just keep running after the quarterback because all they see is sacks, not Cleveland Farrell. And I wish he intercepted this pass, but it's okay. It's still a punt and it still forced them to uh, turn the ball over uh, via a punt. All right, guys, moving on. You're going to see Cleveland at the right defensive end spot. He does a great job here. He's going to take on a polling all pro left guard who goes by the name of Quentin Nelson. If you guys have not seen who this guy is, you guys need to check out some of his film. The guy's a beast. But this play specifically, Cleveland does a great job to get leverage and stand up Quentin Nelson. And not a lot of players can do that. Quentin Nelson's a real, real good guard. You're going to see Quentin Nelson here. He's going to uh, pull to his left. And then you're going to watch how quickly the defensive end for the Raiders is able to recognize that there's a pull coming. Now, there's a couple of things I want to point out, but you guys can watch this play. Um, it's very important, and he does a great job with his leverage, as you guys can see. And I know he's not the first guy that makes the play, uh, but he is the second guy there. And honestly, he does a great job. Uh, if you just watch from the right away, the fact that he understands this tight end is not really blocking him, right? The tight end lets him go really quickly. Cleveland Farrell recognizes that, right? Tight ends don't do that. Offensive linemen, in general, players do not do that. They don't block and then let you go. Uh, but the fact that he's able to get his hands out, understanding that 
the tight end let him go there's a guy that's going to come to pull him and look at the way he gets leverage right there and he stands up Quentin Nelson I believe it or not Quentin Nelson oftentimes puts people down right at this point right here not Cleveland Farrell Cleveland Farrell is not having that. I'm going to just back up here for a second so you guys can see the play in its entirety. Uh, Cleveland Farrell does a great job getting his hands into the chest of Nelson and setting the edge. You know, that's the one thing that we absolutely have to have in this 4-3 defense going to the all 22 here. This running back is going to want to take this to the outside, right? So as you guys are going to see, uh, the running back's going to get the ball. And if the running back's able to get all the way to the outside, he can get a lot of yards. But again, as you see, uh, Cleveland Farrell does a great job setting the edge, and he makes sure the running back is not able to get around him. And of course, as you guys see, uh, Josh Morrow comes in from the backside, chases this play down, and makes the play. But overall, it's a very nice play by both defensive ends and Cleveland Farrell. And these are the types of things that I really like when I watch this defensive end. Now, sticking to the run game, you see Cleveland Farrell lined up at the right end spot. Now, it's very, very important for him to set the edge, but more than just set the edge, he has to close down these backside gaps, right? Close down uh, from the fact that when a running back's going to run the ball either to the left or the right, the running back's going to look for lanes, right? Especially when it comes to power zone. And Cleveland Farrell does a good job. And I know he's going up against a tight end, which oftentimes that's what defensive ends do. But he does a really, really nice job destroying Travis Kelsey I mean Travis Kelsey had no chance and the fact that the running back sees that there's no gap there's honestly nowhere to go because Cleveland Farrell just sets the edge now of course Carl Joseph does a great job blitzing getting through the gap uh, taking his his tight end on and just juking him and getting back there but he doesn't make the tackle uh, Cleveland Farrell kind of comes in and, and makes sure the running back goes down that's a nice job. You know, these are the types of things that I want to continue seeing a Cleveland Farrell develop on. Understanding he's only a rookie. You know, he's only going to get better with the way he's playing, right? The way his uh, his adjustment is to the game. He's only going to get quicker. He's only going to get faster. He's only going to get stronger. And I know there's a lot of people that talk and say things like, I don't see Cleveland doing much. It's because he's not getting sacks. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, but the first part of playing defensive man is you have to stop the run. Remember, Cleo Mack was always a better run defender than he was a pass rusher. All right, so those last two plays didn't really show you guys Cleveland Thrill blowing the play up. I mean, he definitely held, but he didn't blow the play up. But as you're going to see him playing right defensive end, he does a great job here making the play. And a lot of people say, why hasn't he had more sacks? Well, the first thing he has to do is he has to defend the run. And that's kind of where he's at right now. He's been doing a really good job at help defending the run. And I know the Vikings game was a great example of a time in which we really, really struggled at stopping the run. But really, we've been really good against all the other teams that start defending the run, right? Most of the plays that we play, um, most of the snaps that the opposing team runs the ball doesn't go for many yards. I mean, yes, we have had a couple of plays that were really big plays and that kind of screws the the statistics against our defense but a lot of the plays especially run plays end up for plays or end up for gains of like one yard two yards uh, maybe a, an extra yard here or there uh, but a lot of plays end up with the same fate in as as this play and again setting the edge that i showed you guys uh, before as well as making plays like this is what really makes cleveland Farrell special in my eyes as you guys just saw in that play cleveland Farrell made the tackle uh, but what makes him able to make these tackles is the fact that he's a smart player and he's able to shed blocks as you guys see in this play right here that's a great example of, of kind of what he does and i'll slow it down so you guys can see it a little bit better i'll fast forward so we don't waste time um, you're gonna see travis kelsey here pulled to the left and you're gonna see cleveland farrell go unblocked and again cleveland farrell understands when i go unblocked it's for a reason there's a guy coming to pull and he gets that and he understands it and look at how easily he makes Travis Kelsey miss and he does a great job making the tackle on LaShawn McCoy here. Now these are the types of things again that Cleveland Farrell brings for the Oakland Raiders run game right you're gonna see him understand what he needs to do so not only does he feel out plays he can shed blocks he can make tackles for losses but let's be honest the one thing that everybody notices 
and the only reason why people have asked me a number of times where Cleveland Farrell's at is because he really hasn't had the production, not yet that is, in the sack category. Now, staying on the topic of sacks, Cleveland Farrell only has one so far through the first four games. And if he stays on pace, he'll tie Cleo Mack, right? Cleo Mack had four sacks this rookie year. And uh, although a lot of people say this was more of a coverage sack than anything, you're going to see Cleveland at the left defensive end spot. It really was a coverage sack. You know, the quarterback had a long time to get after it. Cleveland Farrell ends up cleaning it up. It's still a great job not to give up. Again, you're going to see him on the right of the screen playing left defensive end. It's still a nice job, but I want to show you guys why he hasn't had more than just this one sack. And, and I want to show you guys and let you guys make your guys' own opinion and let you guys make your own assessment as to why he hasn't had more than one sack and what that kind of means for the first round pick. All right, you guys, here's why Cleveland Farrell really has not been able to get sacks. And it kind of starts with, it's his own ball. I mean, he needs to get off blocks a little bit better. But there's more to sacks or getting pressure than just sacks, right? And here's an example of that. You're going to see Cleveland Farrell go up against the left tackle. And he does a really good job. Now, this left tackle is a pretty good left tackle. Uh, Cleveland does a good job with getting after it and pushing this guy right into the quarterback and honestly it throws the quarterback off right the quarterback's looking and the quarterback takes off running because of the fact that Cleveland Farrell puts pressure on him and uh, you're gonna see this is the play that Vontez Burfecht gets ejected uh, that's a pretty freaking crazy hit if you ask me um, hopefully that all works out for him but again the black to Cleveland Farrell you're gonna see the fact that he's able to push his left tackle right into the quarterback get him off balance just a little bit and these are the types of things that I'm seeing from him you know he's getting close he's getting those almost sacks the Arden Key was getting uh, but he's not able to get home yet but that's okay you know I think just the ability to learn get pressure adjust to the game speed is honestly going to help him out a lot you know, over the course of the next couple of games, over the course going into year two. All right, guys, the second reason as to why he really hasn't been able to get home and not making excuses is the fact that he's playing all these different positions. Here, he's playing left defensive tackle, lining up uh, in that three technique over the right guard, and he gets close, he gets his hands up, tries knocking the ball down. But honestly, it definitely makes it harder for someone to learn multiple positions. The third reason as to why I don't think he's able to get sacks, I don't think he's developed his game enough as of yet. As you're gonna see in this play, he's doesn't really have that second move or that third move or that fourth move as a pass rusher, but there's nothing really wrong with that because at the end of the day, he's still just a rookie. He's still only in, in this case, in his second ever game, you know, and Honestly, there's a reason why there's a thing called player development. Play, plays like this, players like this, uh, they take time, you know, and I know a lot of people might say, well, look at someone like uh, Nick Boza, who already has four sacks. Well, Nick Boza was a, a generational type player, right? Uh, this isn't Nick Boza, right? This is Cleveland Farrell. Now, that's not saying anything else. I, I think Farrell's probably a better run defender than Nick Boza is today. Uh, Farrell's done a great job, as I showed you guys earlier on. Uh, but at the same time, it's not like Cleveland Farrell's getting no pressure. I mean, he's definitely getting close on certain plays. Uh, but on this play, it's a great example of, of he needs that second move. He needs that third move. And I understand he's on the dirt. Definitely makes it much harder. Um, but expect a couple more sacks to start coming. Uh, they're going to definitely start piling up as the season kind of goes on. And to be fully transparent with you guys, when you guys consider total pressure, right, things other than sacks, I mean, Cleveland Farrell's the, the fifth, has the fifth most among defense alignment, right? As you guys see the category here, PSR, uh, it's just total pressures, right, which includes SK, which is sacks, quarterback hits, and quarterback hurries. Cleveland Farrell's has 10 total uh among that right now of course uh you know boza has uh the most at 17 uh, you know brian burns josh allen ed oliver i mean these are some good players and if you're gonna make the comparison that josh allen has more pressures than cleveland farrell i'd make the counter argument uh, against that which is josh allen also has four or five 
pro bowlers or all pro type players on that defense. Cleveland Farrell has nobody and that makes things much easier as a player to be able to get in there and then get those sacks as well. So I think Cleveland Farrell has a lot going for him. I think he's only going to get better. He's still young. Overall, I'm excited and I think you guys should be excited too, but I want to know what you guys think about the film, the stats. I want to know what you guys think about everything in general, about the Raiders. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, please like, share, comment, subscribe if you guys are not subscribers. I hope you guys all have a great day and I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.